Scientists say there's a place in our solar system outside of Earth that has the chemical makeup to potentially support life. That place is Enceladus, Saturn's sixth largest moon. Researchers poured over data collected by a joint NASA-European spacecraft mission and found the moon's ocean contains phosphorus, which is found in human teeth and bones as well as DNA. This is the first time the element has been discovered in an ocean that's not on our planet. CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood joins me now from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. So, Bill, this is fantastic, I think. So they found phosphorus on this moon. Scientists say that means it could support life. So what's next? What do we do with this discovery? Well, you know, one of the, one of the critical things to keep in mind, John, is, is, first of all, they already knew that organic compounds and other molecules that are necessary for life as we know it uh, existed uh, in this subsurface ocean on Enceladus. But the phosphorus is the, is the least abundant of these kinds of ingredients. And finding that really adds strength to the case that Enceladus has a possibly habitable environment under its frozen crust. You know, they think there's an ocean under the surface of Enceladus uh, that, that may possibly be an abode for life. Of course, just because the ingredients are there doesn't mean life is there. Uh, they need to study this a lot more. They need to send additional spacecraft down the road, and they certainly want to do that. But for right now, it sure, sure makes a strong case. Now, uh, before we get to the nuts and bolts about how they figure this stuff out, um, when we're talking about life here, I mean, what are we, what are we realistically t talking about? I mean, are we, are we talking about enormous things, or are we maybe talking about some microbes? <laughs> uh, we're probably talking about microbial life. Um, you know, and a key point there, though, is, you know, we say life as we know it. You know, what does that mean? Well, yeah. we only have one sample of life, and that's life on Earth. Uh, so we look for the chemical processes that allow, you know, DNA and, and self-replicating cells as they developed on Earth. You're looking for similar processes somewhere else that could perhaps lead to that sort of life on that world. Uh, does that mean there couldn't be some other way to come up with life? And, and I suppose there could be, but we're only looking for the, we can only look for the stuff that we know something about, and that's life as we know it on Earth. And, and as we're looking for the stuff we know about, how do we go about looking for it? You mentioned that there's an ocean under the frozen ice. Um, so how do we go about, you know, dipping the old pH strip? I mean, how does this happen? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's interesting. You know, the neat thing about Enceladus is they have these geysers on the south polar regions of the moon that are spewing out water vapor. You know, icy, salty ice particles from that subsurface ocean that are venting out through cracks in the crust. And they've analyzed those. The Cassini spacecraft you referenced at the top flew through those plumes. You know, a cosmic dust collector on that spacecraft actually collected some of these grains that they could study, and that's how they detected the presence of phosphorus. So they know there's water under the surface. The question is, how do you find out more about that, barring drilling down into that ice and seeing what's there? I mean, ideally, that's what you'd like to do, but doing that at the distance of Saturn with a robotic spacecraft is a tall order. <laughs> Uh, and I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. And I understand that NASA has plans. Unfortunately. That, right, exactly. I want this tomorrow. Um, and NASA has plans, though, to explore another moon in our solar system um, that may also have the, the, this mix or a similar mix. Tell, tell us about that mission. Yeah, that's called the Europa Clipper. That's a multi-billion dollar mission NASA plans to launch in the next couple of years. It's not only going to explore Europa, which is a moon that they think is a prime candidate for a subsurface ocean, with possibly habitable environment. It's also going to make repeated flybys of uh, three other moons in the system, including Ganymede and Callisto, which are very large moons that have those same sorts of frozen crust. And on top of the NASA mission, the Europeans just launched a, a, a spacecraft called JUICE. It stands for the Jupiter Icy Moons mission uh, that's going to go to Jupiter also and look for more signs of habitable environments, uh, all in this, in this thirst, I'll call it, to find out if it's possible that life could exist somewhere else in this solar system. That's, that's a big deal in astrobiology, and these spacecraft are going to certainly go uh, see what they can find out in that regard. Well, it's a big deal in my house where we know nothing about astrobiology. It's an amazing search. <laughs> Bill, it's always a great pleasure to talk yeah, to you. It really is. <laughs> Bill Harwood at the Kennedy Space Center.